As you can see guys, currently waiting for restock for the PS5s using my bot that my friend and I made. One minute left, we'll see what happens. Yo, I did it, it worked, I got the PS5. Welcome back everyone, so if you have not seen my videos already, I create bots, and not just any bots, I develop checkout bots for major retailers like Nike, Walmart, Target, Yeezy, and more. And it's funny because a lot of people don't like my guts as I have seen throughout some other videos comments. Because I am the reason, you know, sometimes you're not able to get the product you want because it sells out in seconds. In the body industry, there's a bunch of articles where you see sneakers that have been sold out in like 5 seconds, uh, PS5s sell out within like 10 seconds. but there aren't articles on the other side of the story, the story of the people actually creating the bots, developing the bots, developing the code for the bots. And as a bot developer, I can rightfully say that the bot development industry is super lucrative. You can earn a lot of money really quickly. So in this video, I'm going to share my story on how I became a bot developer. And maybe it'll inspire you guys to become a bot developer as well, because it is an industry that although it has a lot of attention, it is still a baby industry. There's so much room to grow. And if you're one of the first people to hop in any movement or wave, you benefit the most. Now, real quick, if you do want to get into developing bots, then check out my free online course in the description below, where I show in depth how to create a checkout bot. So my origin story, call me Batman basically started where it was december 2019 a winter break right after the first semester of college a friend of mine came to me and my friend sam asking us if we could develop a bot for him because he bought it a lot at the time and he still bots to this day now at this time i had just finished my first cs class at college and i did pretty well in it but i knew that i was nowhere near the skill level of a developer that could actually create a bot like in my mind I did say yes, but I was like, you know what, I'll just do it for a little bit, gain some experience, but I know for a fact I cannot create this. Like, by no means was I even half the programmer back then than I am now. So back then I was like, oh shit, there's no way I'm doing this. So the first site that my friend and I worked on was the site called Yeezy Supply. And this site basically sells Yeezys. And the way it worked was, say the new Yeezys were dropping at 10 a.m., then you would go on the website at 10 a.m. and you were placed in a queue. And this is basically a long line where a bunch of people are waiting for their turn. But now, it isn't first come, first serve. You can be the last in line, or be the first to be called up to actually check out Yeezys. So the idea was, he wanted us to create a bot that could basically make 50 clones of us. So it's like 50 different people in the same line, but at the end of the day, it's just you duplicated 50 times. So that way you have a higher chance of being called up to actually check out the Yeezys. And this is what's known as a browser bot. Now this being the first site, you know everything was really new. And while we were working on the site, we learned about a bunch of stuff, how website security works, how these high-end retailers use recapture systems to protect their website and protect bots from actually, you know, botting their entire checkout process. And we also learned about requests and Fiddler and how to mask a browser, how to make it seem like a browser is a real person using JavaScript. And I can say confidently that we spent at least 100 hours of work creating this browser bot. And while we did learn a lot, the worst thing was that after 100 hours of work, possibly even more, we only had four checkouts. So it's almost like we spent 100 hours of work just to make a profit of like $250. And that too, the money didn't go to us, it went to beta users. So at this point, I was personally like, well, should I continue developing bots for the experience and I can put it on my resume? Or should I actually look at this as a career? Because right now, career-wise, it's not really working out. So I didn't quit and I just told myself, you know what, I'm just gonna keep going and eventually add this to my resume and talk about it with a possible recruiter from Google or like Facebook, whoever tries to recruit me to further company. But that's when everything changed because of the PS5. This Black Friday, some shoppers literally falling over each other to take advantage of the best deals. So the bot industry had its first super major blow up when the PS5 dropped. Everyone wanted a PS5, but no one could get their hands on it because it was like 1% of people, like the group of botters, were getting every single PS5 in stock and the normal average human who was trying to check out manually could never get a PS5. And this is where people were DMing bot developers from all over Instagram, Twitter saying, hey, can you make me a bot? This is where my videos actually started blowing up. And people were asking me, hey, can I have your Walmart bot? Because I see that they checked out 50 consoles already and I want my own console. And now you guys are probably wondering, wait, so at what point did you create a Walmart bot? So two months before the PS5 was scheduled to drop in November or December, I think it was, my friend and I decided to continue the botting game, right? 
and develop our Walmart bot. And this was during the summer because at this time, Nintendo Switches were like a big craze and a lot of people were botting Nintendo Switches on Walmart. So we were like, you know what, let's create a Walmart bot, but this bot was gonna be different. So the bot we use for e-supply and the ones you see in my video, these are called browser bots. Now these are really fast and can have like eight second, nine second checkouts. But we decided to create an even faster bot called a request bot. This bot uses pure requests, no browser, to check out an item. This way an item can be checked out in three to five seconds. And now obviously this was no easy case. We had numerous challenges. One of the major challenges was Perimeter X, which is Walmart's anti-bot security. This security system gave us captures. It gave us code that literally looked like hieroglyphics. Blocked requests sent us to other pages, making us go into continuous loops and spending hours upon hours upon hours of pure research. Like, tell me guys, can you read this code? What does that even mean? It literally looked like a computer just barfed out the alphabet. And this is where a bunch of trial and error came in. Sometimes we would have one configuration request and it wouldn't work. Sometimes we would have another and it wouldn't work. Sometimes it would work, but it only worked like once or twice and it stopped working. And, and the entire process of developing this Walmart module just took so much time and effort. But luckily by the second PS5 drop, which occurred closer to Christmas time, we had a working Walmart module. We were able to get past Walmart security system, decode the hieroglyphics, I don't know how, but we did it, and ultimately create a bot that checked out items within four seconds. And as a result, we had a bunch of success, and a lot of users are really happy, and the bot is still out today, and it's called Quantum AIO, the fastest Walmart bot there is. But what people don't understand about bot developing is the fact that it requires a lot of constant attention. Walmart and these other major retailers, they constantly change their backend and their website because they know that, hey, we gotta keep these bot developers on their toes. But one thing I can say, guys, once you figure out a site, it's not hard to figure it out again. So all these security developers of these major retailers, you can run, but you can't hide. Now, while this all sounds super cool and inspiring, the best part was the amount of learning that I was able to achieve on my journey so far as a bot developer. I learned a crazy amount. I learned about technology such as Puppeteer, uh, open source code, CEF Sharp, Chromium, and a bunch of other things. And then I learned more about browsers and requests, how HTTP uh, clients work, how browsers process things on the back end, how websites try to detect bots, how user agents are super important, and all this other nitty gritty stuff that I would never learn in school. And I truly feel that before I began my bot developer story, I was an okay developer. I, I guess I could say I was good at finding solutions and figuring things out, but I could not even understand like coding jargon. Like some of my friends who were higher level, they would talk like they literally sleep and eat cold. And I would just be like, like bro, what, what are y'all saying? Like, can I have some English, please? So now it feels like I can actually talk coding jargon and not just write it only. And in a way, you kind of fall in love with the challenges. It's like you versus PhD, master degree developers for Nike and Walmart. And you're just like a 20 year old guy trying to code a bot. And it's like you versus them. They have all this experience and you're still winning. And it's just like really cool. It's like you're the underdog and you're being like the superior master coders of the world. So after this whole journey, I'm sure you guys are probably like, so what exactly do you do now? In the past month, I created five checkout bots for sites such as Newegg and some other in the cut websites that I really can't say online because my clients don't even want me telling you guys about, hey, I created a bot for this site. In other words, they basically want the bot I created for them all for themselves so other people can't use it so the competition is less, which is kind of funny. But I guess you can say I do software contracting now for like bots. So if you ever hit me up and you ask me, hey, Ritesh, can you create this bot for me? I'd be like, sure, I got you. But I also give back to the community by, you know, my course I created where I actually show you how to create a bot from beginner to pro. And the reason I even created this course is because I know some people watching this video may not even be interested in computer science, they just want their PS5. But it's like, hey, maybe if you actually watch my course and you know you create the bot and you see firsthand in the bot check out items for you really fast, you'll be like, whoa, I created this. Yes, I had some help, but I did that. You know, I created this, I created this bot that can literally check out items. You can tell your friends, and that's really your introduction to computer science. Or if you are already a super strong computer scientist, you may want to explore the bot industry world because you want to make even more money as a developer. And guys and girls, this community has so much more room to grow. I know even if you aren't interested in computer science, maybe you can create a bot that can help you get the item you want for whatever website and you don't have to pay someone else like thousands of dollars to create a bot when you can do it yourself. But be sure to join this community. If you have any questions, then email me, ask me on Discord, link in the description below. Check out my course and thank you all for watching. Hopefully this inspired you to at least check out the bot developer industry or check out my course. Thank you all for watching, peace.